Good morning. Uh, my name is Pastor T.W. Brock, and I bring you greetings from the uh, Greater Mount Calvary Baptist Church, Bruton slash Boyk in Alabama. Um, it is another beautiful day. Um, we had tornadoes and hail yesterday, um, but um, as far as I know, no uh, no one was injured. Um, we have a uh, church member um, that had to go to the hospital, uh, but Carl checked on last night, um, seemingly doing well. I have a cousin uh, that is still grieving. I want everybody to listen to this really closely. So um, I talk to grieving families all the time. Uh, and I always have the perfect thing to say. And it's because I don't know them. And because I don't know them, I know exactly what to tell them. I, I don't know their families. I don't know the person that is either deceased or, or in the uh, dying process. Um, so I can lean on my uh, medical knowledge on uh, what to say and how to say it, and uh, generally can get bring them comfort in their time of need, um, and and also uh, uh, pastoral knowledge. So, um, my cousin recently lost his wife, um, and growing up, we were very close, very close, and um, you know, as you grow up, and uh, he got married, I got married, uh, you know. Uh, time kind of just um, kind of separates you. Um, uh, and and his wife recently passed, young young lady. Um, and it's funny, um, not not funny, and uh, it's odd. <sighs> I don't know what to say. Um, I pick up the phone to call him to 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 check on him, and, and I just sit there and hold the phone because um, don't know what to say. Um, I pray for him every night pray that God keeps him. I pray that God uh, uplifts him. Uh, and every day I pick up the phone to text him or to call him and I can't figure out what I'm going to say. And um, I say to all of you all out there, sometimes you don't know what to say. Don't know what to say. Uh, continue to pray. and pray that God sends you what to say. But until he sends you what to say, uh, I'm going to say this and I'm going to say it to myself also. You must muster up the courage to call even if you don't know what to say because maybe the reason you don't know what to say is because God didn't want you to say anything. He just wants you to listen. Um, so we continue to pray for him and his family. Um, as we bow our heads in prayer, our Father, which art in heaven, we come to you this day, dear Father. Thank you for blessing on blessing. Thank you for being a good and heavenly Father, one that sits high and looks low, and once again has allowed us to gather here today to listen to your word and to preach your word, Lord. I always ask that um, I be your vessel. Um, I know that I'm not pure, nor am I clean, Lord. So if only for a moment, if you will cleanse me of all impurities and all evil thoughts, Lord, pour in your word um, so it may be poured out amongst the masses, Lord. Lord, um, let your son Jesus be the, uh, the the interpreter. That way, as it comes out of my mouth, it may be uh, changed to whatever the masses might need to hear. Um, Lord, just continue to touch us, keep us, guide us. This be my prayer in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Um, if you will, turn to me to um, Luke 22. Uh, Luke 22. Uh, and we'll read verse 24. Luke 22, verse 24 from the NIV has said, um, A dispute also arose among them as to which of them was considered to be the greatest. A dispute also arose among them to which of them was considered to be the greatest. Title of the sermon today, everybody sitting in church ain't thinking about heaven. Everyone sitting in church ain't thinking about heaven. Been going to church a long time now. And um, as I have grown in Christianity and as, as I've grown in church and as I've moved up into different positions in the church from just a pew member to um, a usher to head usher to choir member um, to uh, associate pastor um, to uh, pastor. As you move up, um, you find that church really don't change. Church really doesn't change. Um, and I grew up thinking that the, the deacons and the, the first ladies and the um, the, the, the uh, deacons wives and, you know, the people that you see every Sunday, the the um, 
the lady that that teaches Sunday school. Um, you know, the folks that 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 act like they they got they know God so personally that they don't ever do the wrong. Those people. I used to uh, want to be like them when I was young. I, I, I would hope that one day I could be like those people. And then as I grew up, I realized that them folks was just folks. And I saw that some of them would do things and say things um, that would make folks just not want to come to church. So church folk was doing stuff in church that was so not of God that other folks didn't want to come to church. Everybody sitting in church ain't thinking about heaven. Listen closely now because some of y'all upset right now because of something somebody said at church or something somebody did at church and you talking about resigning or leaving or, or I go to another church. And before you say that, before you say that foolishness, I'll just go to another church. So it's foolishness at every church you go to. And when you first get to your new church, the reason that you don't know anything about the foolishness is because you're not in the meetings. You don't go to the back. You just go listen to the sermon and you go home. But this morning, we're going to talk about what goes on in the meetings. Uh, in parking lot service, we're going to talk about what goes on after the meeting. All right. So this is the meeting, park lot service after the meeting. And, and I hope I help somebody to be able to uh, smile when foolishness comes your way, because I promise you, foolishness going to come your way. And people go, well, church is supposed to be my sanctuary. Well, I, I say this. Um, you better find you a prayer closet because I, that's about the only place that I found sanctuary. Because when I go to church, it's foolishness always waiting on me at my church. And we have a pretty good church. So if foolishness is waiting on me at my church, I'm pretty sure foolishness is waiting on you at your church. So here we go. Everybody sitting in church ain't thinking about it. So in Luke 22, we find that Jesus has deployed um, his disciples to go find a place for the Last Supper. So they need a place to, to uh, have the Last Supper and have church. Uh, baptized body of believers need to come together, have a little church as Jesus gets ready for um, to go toward crucifixion. I'm not sure if all of the disciples really know what's going to happen. They just know something is about to happen. And Jesus is very sad about what is about to happen. And Jesus wants to eat with them for the last time. So they want to go into an upper room and uh, eat together. So I'm going to just say they finna have a meeting. They're going to have a meeting, and uh, and while they're in this meeting, they're going to take communion, all right? We're just going to make it real simple. So they're going to have uh, what, what we would call conference or a deacon meeting, and while there, they're going to have uh, communion. So um, Jesus deploys uh, um, his disciples to find this, uh, and he gives them specific instructions that they follow it. And I, I want to start out by saying that um, even though we're not perfect, um, God can still use us. So in the beginning, he as he deploys uh, Peter and John saying, go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. At this moment, he knows that um, there's a vast difference between Peter and John and how they're going to react um, as he is um, um, as he is captured, as he is uh uh, traits from courtroom to courtroom. And as he is crucified, he knows that Peter is going to not deny him. And he knows that John is going to be there. And he's actually going to be able to look at John and tell John to take care of his mother. But even though knowing that both of them are disciples of his, but have drastically different personalities, drastically different about how they go about things and have so all the way through the way that they've carried out things in the past, Jesus still gives both of them the same task and employs them the same and speaks to them the same. So I want to say this. It's a lot of y'all out there that don't understand why so-and-so is the chairman of the deacon board or why, why, why the Lord allows so-and-so to do do this or why this person is the treasurer that God can use anybody. And I want to say this, nobody's perfect. Everybody has their, their, uh, uh, their, their, their faults. So it's a young man at, at, uh, that works with me. And, um, I said a, a cuss word one night. Oh, pastor, you cuss every now and then. If I get mad enough, I'm not going to lie. Cuss word comes out of my mouth. I want to let y'all know I don't even portray myself to be perfect. 
I, I am flawed. I am working on it. I am trying. And a lot of times when we tell people as pastors that we're perfect and then they see a flaw in us, then they, 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 they don't know what to do. So I make sure that everyone knows that I have flaws. I have done bad. I still do things that are wrong and I'm working on myself on a regular basis. So I was, uh, but overall, good person. Um, so I was sitting um, at a desk and, and said a cuss word. Oh my goodness, this guy lost his mind. He got up, oh, he ranted, he raved, he did circles. He he said he did, oh my goodness. He couldn't believe that the preacher said a cuss word. Oh my, and he, and he stormed off. So didn't say anything. So the next night he comes down and uh, he says, I can't believe you did that. I said, well, I want to say this. Uh, one, sorry that it offended you, uh, but I want to let you know that I'm not perfect. Um, and too many preachers have you to believe that they're perfect and they do things in, in the dark. And when it comes out, then the world is astonished that a preacher is not perfect. Well, I'm here to tell y'all that the preacher ain't perfect. The deacon ain't perfect. The first lady ain't perfect. Uh, nobody's perfect. We come out of the womb flawed. We do the best we can with what God gave us. Every day we're trying to do better. And if you're looking at your pastor to be perfect, if you're looking at your deacon to be perfect, if you're patterning your life behind anybody other than Jesus, you're patterning your life behind a flawed person. So this thing starts in verse eight by saying, Jesus spoke to Peter and John and gave them a task knowing that they were both flawed, Peter being more so openly flawed than John. He said, go find me a room to have and uh, go have the Passover or the Last Supper as we know it. He said, and, and, and in verse 14, look at this. He says, when the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined and at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat the Passover with you before I suffer. Y'all, church folk, non-church folk, nothing makes the Lord happier than to be in communion with us, than, than, than for us to, to, to want to sit and, and, and pray and talk and be with him. Um, he, no way in that did he say before they, they did these things that he wanted them to be perfect. No way in that did he say that he thought Peter had changed from the scoundrel that he had been. No way in that did, did, he, did he say, hey, Judas, before I need you to change your thoughts about betraying me before I can eat this last supper. He said he eagerly desired to eat the Passover just as they are. And, and, and I've learned this as a pastor. I have to take people just as they are. I can't change the folks in my church that are fools. They've been fools their whole life. All I can try to do is, is preach and teach them the word of God and hope that somewhere along the way that they slowly start to change and see the error of their ways. I can't change them. I can't make them change. Uh, and when I do all this hollering and getting mad about the fact that they still fools, all I'm doing is hurting myself. I'll decline as the pastor. They keep acting like that. Well, you sure going to decline because for the most part, they're going to keep acting just like that. They've been acting that way 60 years, 60 years, 70 years where the pastor ain't going to talk to me like that. Well, if you voted a fool in as the pastor, then why are you just appalled that the dude that you voted in, now he was a fool before you voted him in. He was a fool when he took the voting. He was a fool when you installed him. He said some foolish things the day you installed him. He been acting a fool in the church since you installed him. His sermons been foolish. The, the voting been foolish. Now all of a sudden, when he acting a fool on you, you want to be astonished. Jesus said, look, I'm going to take you just as you are. He said, Peter, I know you're going to deny me. I, I'm eager to sit with you. Judas, I know you're going to betray me, but I'm eager to sit with you. Hey, all you other jokers in here, y'all not even going to show up for my crucifixion. He said, but you know what? I'm okay with that. I know who you are. Do you know the best day as a pastor? Pastors, listen to me right now. The best day you can have as a pastor is when you realize who your congregation is, who's sitting with you in these meetings, who who your deacon board is, who your sick and shut in. Y'all, I used to have expectations of people that were unrealistic because I didn't know my people. <clears throat> 
But once I learned my people and I realized that everybody sitting in the room wasn't thinking about heaven. Everybody sitting in the room wasn't thinking about helping folks. Everybody sitting in the room wasn't praying. Everybody sitting in the room didn't know Bible verses. Everybody sitting in the room. Some folks only came to church to be seen. Some folks only came to church to be heard. Some folks only came to church to show off their new car. Some folks only came to church so they could sing a song. Some folks only came to church so they could pray a prayer. Some folks only came to church to show off their big hat. Some folks only came to church, listen to me, to act a fool. Some folks only came to church so they could show you they could speak in tongue. Some folks only came to church so they could hoop and holler. Some folks only came to church so they could say, uh, amen. People, some folks come to church only because they have an agenda. Now, I need you to know that there was a lot of agendas at this last supper, but Jesus said, I am eager to sit with all of you. So I have found that if Jesus can overlook who I am, if he can overlook that sometimes I cuss, if he can overlook that sometimes I get mad, if he can overlook that I ain't always got my mind set on heaven, if he can overlook that sometimes that I want to fight, if he can overlook all of that in me, then I have had to learn that I have to overlook these tendencies in other folks because nobody is perfect and everybody that's sitting in church, I don't care if they're sitting in the upper room. I don't care if they're sitting at the table with Jesus. I don't care if they're just taking communion. I don't care if it's the last supper. Everybody sitting at church ain't got their mind on heaven. <laughs> So, verses 17 through 20, they partake in the Last Supper. They partake in communion. And I love when people say, don't take communion unless your mind is pure. Well, if you wait until you have a pure mind, where you have forgave everybody that you done did harm, where you don't have no impure thoughts, where everybody that you done cussed, you done called and apologized to, where every time that you done got mad, you done cleansed your heart. And I love it when people lie to me. Y'all stop lying to yourself and stop lying to your pastor. I stand here before y'all today saying that I don't have no impure thoughts. I don't have, I don't wish no harm upon nobody. Lies, 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 lies. Everybody that takes communion while taking communion is still a sinner. So I don't want anybody at any church to not take communion. It is. It is, a, it is a ritual that he says, each time you do this, do so in remembrance of me. So it is a ritual that we do trying to remember the fact that the Lord went up on yonder's cross and died, shed blood for me and you. So if you're waiting on the day that you are sin free, that your mind is strictly on heaven to take communion, I'm going to go in and tell the folks at my church, don't order no more communion because we're not taking no more communion because Everybody in there that's sitting at the communion table, everybody that's there waiting on the Passover, everybody that there that say they love the Lord, everybody that say they love the pastor, everybody that say, even if I don't pray today, pastor, I'm going to show up. Lies, lies, lies. Even if I don't sing today, pastor, I'm going to show up. Lies, lies, lies. Even if y'all don't call on me to teach the service, I'll tell you what you do. I tell you what you do, pastors. Listen to me. Some of them folks that been your Sunday school teacher for 30 years, tell them they can't be the Sunday school teacher for two or three Sundays in a row. And you'll see who got their mind set on heaven. I tell you what you do, pastors. Listen to me, pastors. I tell you what you do. You take the chairman of the deacon board and tell him he can't pray for two or three Sundays and see if he keep coming to church. You're going to start testing some folks and see if they got their minds set on heaven because everybody at the communion table, everybody at Passover didn't have their minds set on heaven. But this is what I love about it. That's part of going to church. And Jesus said he was still eager to sit with them because he knew that they weren't perfect. See, a lot of us put stipulations on people and on things that are unrealistic. It is unrealistic. These are just humans. Now, listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. So while all of this was going on, while all of this was going on, so just as soon as the Passover happened, verse 20 had happened, verse 21 happened, and then it said, but the hand of him who is going to betray me is with mine on the table. That joker said, Judas, I know 
that you sitting in this room. I know you at church. I know you done just took communion. I know you done just partook in, and partaken in the last supper. He said, but Judas, your mind is not on heaven. First of all, pastors, listen to this. First of all, pastors. So Jesus told the truth, but he didn't call nobody out. Now, I need y'all to hear what I say, pastor. I have learned this. Now, this, this is something that you learn as time goes along. You can preach about a situation and tell what's right and what's wrong, but you can't call nobody out from the pulpit. Jesus had opportunity right here where he could have said, Judas, you are at church. You sit in that church, but you ain't got your mind on heaven. He could have literally said, Judas, you done betrayed me. He could have literally said, Judas, you's a scoundrel. He could have said all these things right now. But what he wanted to do was he needed to let them know that there was somebody in the building that had sin on their heart that was a betrayer. And he also wanted them to know that. Even though this is true, he's still going to feed you. He's going to feed you even though he knows what's in your heart. Y'all listen to that. So if Jesus can feed you knowing that you are a betrayer, Jesus can feed you knowing that you are a liar. Jesus said you can still sit at my table and sup even though I know who you are. He said, but I'm not going to call you out. Pastors, you cannot call people out from the pulpit. That is not Fair. Now you can teach truth. You can say that some people need to do better. You can say that some people in our church need to hold their tongue. You can call out the situation, but you cannot say folks name. You can't make it so plain that people know that you are talking about John. That is not right. They did not know exactly who Jesus was talking about. Jesus preached a good sermon in one word, but he ain't called nobody out. Pastors, you cannot do your flock like that because you want to know why pastors cost at one day you're going to do wrong and you'll be so mad if the chaplain of your deacon boy get up and preach a sermon on you because we are all human and we all fall short of the glory of God. And I'm going to say this real plain. Everybody sitting at church ain't thinking about heaven, including the preacher. Jesus said that somebody in here going to betray him. Now, they started to wonder who it was. Now, I need y'all to think about this now. Now, now this will help some church folk because there's some church folk that get caught off guard. Y'all get caught off guard. I, I used to love it that my mama would get caught off guard. It would be so funny. She get caught off guard. She'd come up and go, I can't believe that so-and-so did this. My wife is the same way. I can't believe that so-and-so did this. Now, I'm not one of those people. I believed it. I believed it. I'm going to show you why I believed it. I'm going to show you exactly why I believed it. So right here, Jesus said that somebody sitting at this table with their hand on the table, somebody sitting at the table with their hand on the table. He says that one of y'all going to betray me. And Jesus already know in his mind that one of y'all going to betray me for some money. In John 12, Jesus done just raised Lazarus from the dead. He's sitting there with Lazarus reclined. Mary comes up to anoint Jesus' feet with perfume. And it says some expensive perfume. And as he goes, John 12 literally says that Judah says, don't do it. He said, we could sell that perfume for a lot of money. So he had his eyes set on money instead of on Jesus. All right. So I'm going to say this. Y'all listen to me. When people tell you who they are, I need y'all, my wife say it now, because I've been saying it for a long time. When people tell you who they are, believe them. Believe them. When they tell you who they are, believe them. Judas told them in John 12, he said, I, me, Judas, I put money over the Lord every time. He said, I'd rather take that anointing perfume and put it in my pocket. So, when somebody then told you that they put money over the church, don't be surprised when they put money over the church. When somebody tell you that they'll cheat on their husband or their wife, don't be surprised when they hit on your husband or on your wife. When the pastor, when the pastor, like, look, this is what kills me. So, this guy been in your community for years and years and years. 
before he was a pastor. He was just a lay preacher. He wasn't a pastor. He was just a lay preacher. And he been sleeping with women. He been stealing. He been doing all this. But he go off and get a doctrine. And just because he got a doctrine, all of a sudden you wanted to be his pastor. Don't him to be your pastor. Then you are surprised when he sleep with the women in your church and steal your money because he got... Why are you surprised when people tell you who they are? Believe them. And you won't be mad when you come home talking about I can't believe so-and-so did something. No, they didn't told you who they were a long time ago. You remember in choir meeting when they acted the food, they told you, I'm a fool. You remember that deacon me when they stood up and put their hand and rock their head and cussed and all that stuff in the church. They told you. You remember that time that they acted the fool and talked about they were going to fight somebody in the church. Y'all remember that? They told y'all they was a fool. They told y'all. It was some folks said something like this. If I can't have a position, then I'll just go home. I tell you what, if we ain't going back in the church, I'll just go home. Then you surprised that when you don't go back in the church, they just go home. They told you who they was. Just believe them. Everybody that sit in the church every Sunday don't have a mind on heaven. Okay? Everybody don't have a mind on heaven. Everybody's not trying to get into the kingdom. Some folk come just to raise hell. Some folk come just to teach Sunday school. Some folk come just to preach a sermon. Some folk come just to pray. Some folk come just to sing. Listen to this. Some folk come just to do announcements. Good evening. I bring you greetings on behalf of the Greater My Calvary Baptist Church. I would like to give the announcements. Now, since pandemic can't get no announcement, them jokers don't come to church. Hey, look, when church start back, I promise you, they'll come back because they done told you, I'm just coming for announcements, boss. But you got to believe the fact that when something else happens, they not going to hold it in the road because they are who they said they were. Judas, Jesus says it right here. He said, look, his hand on the table. I know he's going to betray me based on John 12. He done betrayed me one time before. He tried to stop that girl from annoying my feet because he wanted some money. Now he's going to betray me again for a little bit of silver. But I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. He said I'm not surprised because he is who he said he was. I'm going to close it down because I hope I'm helping somebody. Like a lot of y'all are laughing right now, but this real church, like I've been going to church 40 some years and I don't care what regime I've been under. I don't care which past it has been. The people don't change and people get upset and they want to leave the church because they think the folks that are going in the back for the meeting, they think for some reason because they're the head of the deacon board, because they're the pastor, because they're the fair lady, because they're the head of the missionary department, the head of the ush board, because they're the head of whatever and they're in the back in the meeting and they take communion and all this stuff. They think that they're different, but I'm here to tell you that people are just people. Verse 24. Now, now, right now, Jesus just said that the last time he gonna eat with them folks. Now, I need y'all to know, I love my wife. I love my wife, y'all. Y'all love my wife. Y'all don't even know. I love my wife. If my wife came to me and said, husband, this is the last time we gonna ever eat together. Do y'all know I wouldn't be able to take my eyes or my mind off my wife? I said, it's because I love her. I wouldn't be thinking about nothing but her. I wouldn't be thinking about nothing about but 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 what's going to happen to her. How is it going to be without her? How is life going to be after her? So you would think right here since Jesus just said that the last time we're going to eat together, you would think that everybody in the room, they done seen all these miracles. They done lived this great life being with him. They done ate because of him. They in this room because of him. Peter going to say in a minute, I die if you die. I go to jail if you go to jail. So if this is true, you would think that everything would be about him. You would think that everybody sitting in the room, mind would be on heaven because that's all he's been preaching all this time. But verse 24 says, a dispute also rose among them about which of them will be considered the greatest. Y'all hear what I say? Some folks come to church just to be seen and to have a little bit of power. They don't have no power at home. At home, they don't get to say nothing. At home, they don't get to do nothing. But oh, at church, 
Can't wait to get to church for a little piece of power. Act the fool. Been jockeying to be the head of the deacon board since they were old enough to spare a deacon board because they thought that being the head was going to get them some power. But y'all listen to what I say. The one person that actually went and did with John, y'all listen now. Folks that want to be the head of the deacon board, listen. Folks that want to be the head of the missionary department, listen. To folks that want to be the co-pastor, listen. To the folks that want to be somebody in church, the folks that's sitting in the back room, I need y'all to listen to this. The one person that showed up at the crucifixion, the one deacon that came to do, the one that came was John. And the only thing that God, that Jesus said to him was, I need you to work. I need you to take care of my mama. So if you want to be the greatest at the church, what that means is you are the servant. You are the hardest working man or woman in town. You ain't giving nobody hell. John didn't hardly say anything other than, yes, sir, I'll do so. But everybody else talking and ain't doing anything. Peter just keep running his mouth about he'll do this and he'll do that. And just as soon as he get asked a question by the Lord, he tells a lie. Judas then talked about money to told who he is and he all betraying folks. Thomas don't show up when Jesus come back to be seen and then have the audacity to say if he ain't put his finger in his side then it ain't him. Y'all hear what I say. Everybody want to be Lord, they want to sit in heaven beside God. They want to be standing beside the preacher while he preaching holding a towel, dabbing his head. Everybody want to pray altar prayer. Everybody want to pray these long 40, 50, 60, 70 minute prayer that sound like a sermon to have a hoop at the end. Up sidebar, if you want to preach, go and preach. If you is the deacon and your job is to pray, then Lord have mercy, can you do that? The people did not come for four, five, and six sermons because Every deacon that get up that want to pray or pray longer than the last deacon. One, be praying about stuff folk don't even know about. I want your prayer to be relevant. Y'all hear what I say? I need some deacons that pray some prayers that are relevant. I don't want to hear about nothing going on well over yonder. I don't want to hear nothing about no cold water. I don't want to hear no foolishness that get to rhyming. I want somebody that praying for what I'm going through. Praying for the fact that we have a church in parking lot. Praying for the fact that we ain't touching each other. Praying for the fact that we wear masks all the time. All these irrelevant prayers that go on for 45 minutes that you done memorized at home at night that don't make no sense. Pastor, you upset this? Son. I'm not upset. I just realized that everybody sitting in church ain't thinking about heaven. Not upset. Not upset. They have told me who they are and I believe them. Got folks up in there. He said they fighting over who's going to be the greatest. Who's going to be the greatest at church? But it sounds like my church sound like Everybody church. Folk calling about who gonna be this and who gonna be that. Who gonna do this and who gonna do that. Do you need a position to do in the church? Do you have to have a title to go help somebody? Do you need to be acknowledged to announce in the community that things are going, going on? Do you have to be the chairman of the Deacon Board to pray for somebody? I need some folk that, that, that go to church to be thinking about heaven. Stop thinking about the money. Stop thinking about the prestige. Stop thinking about teaching the Sunday school or singing in the choir or praying the prayer. Hey, man, all that stuff going to happen whether you think about it or not. I need y'all to do some missionary work. I need y'all to do some stuff that don't nobody know about. I need y'all to do some stuff that ain't, you ain't going to get no recognition for. I need you to do some stuff that you don't come back and tell the pastor about. Because you know what? This is what I'm thinking when you tell me about who you checked on. You were supposed to check on them. What you giving me a check out for? The Lord saw you check on them. They knew that you checked on them. Pastor, I went over to so-and-so house and I gave him a piece of money. What you telling me for? That should have been private. You ain't going to be telling everybody you gave out no money to them. That's private. 
I had to pray for them. You know they lost everything. Private. But I realized everybody that go to church, that sitting in church, ain't think about heaven. Now, that's it. I need y'all out there that was finna give up your position, that come home every day and sit around the table and talk about how you mad at so-and-so because all they want to do is pray. I'm mad at so-and-so because they don't want to pray. I'm mad at so-and-so because they don't come to church because they can't do. I'm mad at so-and-so because they want to sing all the songs. I'm mad at so-and-so. Hey, man, they just human. They done already told you who they are. Let it go. Let it go. Find something else to talk about. It's cool. Let it be. You trying to get into heaven. What are you thinking about? So if you're thinking about all that when you're at church, you ain't thinking about heaven either. Get your mind on your, your task. Get your mind on your task at church. Are you working to make this meeting better? Are you working to make church better? Are you doing your part? Are you keeping your mind? Ooh, the preacher ain't preaching. They, they, they ain't none of your concern. Your job is to do the best you can at church. Are you worshiping the Lord? I don't need nobody else at church. I can show up. I'm here by myself right now and I'm worshiping just fine. I had a whole worship session before church, before I ever hit record. I was in my car crying, having a good time. I need no one but me and the Lord and how good he's been to me to have worship service. That way I don't have to worry about it. Anybody else in this room got their mind on heaven because the only person in this room is me and I have my mind on heaven. Good day.